I'm Gary Stevenson, former trader and people's economist. This is Gary's Economics. Today we're going to explain why the rich get richer. Okay, so there's a common misconception that a lot of people have about why rich people and rich families tend to get richer and richer over time. People tend to believe that getting rich is about getting very good jobs, very high paying jobs. And it is true that most very well paying jobs are dominated by richer people and people from rich families. But actually there's a much simpler reason and more important structurally that explains why rich people tend to get richer and richer over time. And that is quite simply because rich people own all of the wealth, all of the assets in our country, and that forces poor and ordinary people to give all or almost all of their money to rich people every year. We're going to explain in this video how that works. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk a lot about wealth. And it's important that you understand what wealth is. When we talk about wealth, we're not talking simply about money. We're talking about physical assets such as property, the house or the flat that you live in, the office that you work in, the shops and the shopping centres and the supermarkets in the city that you live in, and also natural resources like land and oil and gas and coal. If you're not familiar with understanding wealth as these physical resources, I recommend you go and watch our video What is Wealth, which explains really clearly what wealth is. So you understand what wealth is, and you know that the country is full of wealth, and that is largely properties, which is not just the properties you live in, but also where you work and where you shop, and it's also natural resources like land. Also, crucially, it's things like debt. So for example, your mortgage, that is wealth for somebody who owns your mortgage, and the government debt is wealth for somebody who lends the money to the government. So this country is full of wealth, but most ordinary people don't own much wealth. If they're lucky, they own the property that they live in, but they're not likely to own vast amounts of commercial wealth, such as shopping centres or skyscrapers or supermarkets. The vast majority of wealth that is owned in the country is owned by very rich people. And if you look at stocks and shares, who are the corporations who own commercial property, they're overwhelmingly owned by richer people. So the first fact you need to understand is that the vast majority of wealth and assets in this country are owned by richer people not ordinary people. So the next thing you need to know is those assets are often things which ordinary people literally need. So the most obvious case is if you rent the property you live in, that is owned by a wealthy person, you need that property. And that generates a cash flow from you, an ordinary person, to the person who owns your property every month. But even if you do own your property, but with a large mortgage, it's important to understand that a rich person ultimately owns your mortgage. So every single month you make interest payments, they go from you to that rich person. But it goes much deeper than that. Every time you go to the supermarket and you buy your groceries, a big chunk of the money you spend goes to the rich person who owns the supermarket. Also the rich people who own the land in which the food was grown. And every time you pay your bills to heat your home, a big chunk of that goes to the rich person who owns the natural resources, which might be the coal or the oil, or it might be the wind farm or the solar farm that generates the electricity. So every time you spend basically any money, it's important to consider that that money you spend is not generally going to the workers in that place. You know, in the case of rent and mortgages, there are no workers involved. Every time you spend money in the supermarket or in the shops, a big chunk of your money is going to richer people. So I think it's worth just sitting and thinking about your personal position. For a little bit. So for a lot of people, especially a lot of young people, you'll get your money from your job and you'll pay your rent or your mortgage if you're lucky enough to own property. You'll pay your bills. There'll not really be much left over. I mean, especially now we're looking at the cost, the basic cost of living going up significantly. For a lot of people, literally your entire salary is going to go on paying these basic costs. And I want you to think about where does that money go? Because it's very easy, you pay your mortgage and you don't think, where does this money end up? But that mortgage that you pay, the interest ultimately goes to a wealthy individual. And when you go to the supermarket, you just think the money's gone, but it goes ultimately to the owners of that supermarket. So if you're in a situation where after paying for your basics, 80, 90, even close to 100% of your salary is gone, basically all of your salary has gone to the owners of the assets. So all of the money that you make goes directly to rich people. I think when you understand this, it starts to become 
really obvious that even if rich people don't have super good jobs, they are going to get richer every year because all of your salary or the vast majority of your salary goes pretty much straight to them just to keep you in a house and to keep food on your table. So that's from the perspective of an ordinary person. A big chunk of your salary goes basically directly back to the rich when you pay your bills, when you pay your mortgage, when you pay your rent. Let's consider it from the perspective of a very wealthy person. So let's take, for example, one of my favorite people in public life today, Rishi Sunak, who's worth an approximated 200 million pounds. He is receiving those payments, right? So when you pay your rent, it's going to him or someone like him. When you pay your mortgage, it's going to him or someone like him. Every single time you go to the supermarket, every single time you pay your bills, it's going to him or someone like him. Now, if the wealth is very, very concentrated with really rich people like Rishi Sunak, each one of those people can receive an enormous amount of money. So he's worth 200 million pounds. These people typically make about 3% a year on their income, so on their wealth. So he's gonna make about six million pounds every year just because he owns the assets, because he owns buildings, because he owns natural resources, because he maybe owns your debts. So imagine you're Rishi Sunak. And remember this six million pounds, it's not money he gets for working. It's money he gets because he owns the stuff that you need and you have to pay him to use it. So he's getting six million pounds every year, every year. Now imagine you're Rishi Sunak and you're getting six million pounds every year just for getting out of bed. Do you think you would get richer year after year? Well, you would. You would, wouldn't you? Because if you're making a six million pound income every year, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna spend six million pounds a year because that would be totally ridiculous. I, like you, couldn't even imagine how you would even spend six million pounds a year. He's probably gonna spend half a million pounds a year, live like the queen, who he is reputedly richer than, and save five and a half million pounds a year. So this mystery of why rich people get richer, it's actually much, much more simple than you think. Rich people get richer because they own all of the things that you use. They own your house, they own your mortgage, they own the supermarket that you do your shopping in, they own the companies that provide your electricity. They own the cinema that you go to. They own the airplanes that you use when you go on holiday. They own everything that you use and you give all of your money to them because they own the stuff that you need, which means that they generate an enormous amount of income from you. So again, Rishi Sunak makes six million pounds a year, literally just for getting out of bed because he owns the stuff that you use and that money is ultimately coming from you. So when you understand that rich people own all of the assets and get all of your salary, it becomes pretty obvious that they're gonna get richer year after year. You make 30 grand a year, you give all of it to the rich people, so you have nothing to save. They make six million pounds a year, it's obvious they're gonna accumulate money year after year. Okay, so these are the facts. The rich people own everything, ordinary people own very little. Ordinary people pay all of their salary to the rich people every year, and rich people make millions of pounds every year from that money. This means they accumulate a huge amount of cash. It's important to understand what do they then do with that cash? Because this generates a real imbalance in society, right? They keep accumulating more and more and more cash, but you need that cash to live. So how do you get that cash back? Now, there's a few ways that cash flows back from rich people to ordinary people. One way is rich people live really luxurious lives, right? They go on really luxurious holidays, they maybe pay for a lot of stuff, they go to very expensive bars and restaurants, they spend a lot of money. And that is one way that ordinary money flows back from rich people to ordinary people. But if inequality gets too high, you get a situation where there's not that many rich people, but they're phenomenally rich. You know, if, if there's broadly equal society, you can have a lot of relatively rich people. But if you have a very unequal society, you have a very small number of extraordinarily rich people. Now, as people get richer and richer, their consumption doesn't go up in a line. So if you consider, say, Jeff Bezos, he's got a wealth of $200 billion, he'll make about $6 billion a year, he will spend a tiny, tiny fraction of that. So as the rich get richer and richer and richer, they are not able to spend enough money to get that money circulating back through the economy. So what do they do? Well, one thing that they do is they use it to buy assets. But remember, the rich as a whole are buying assets, so they can't buy them from each other, they need to buy them from the rest of us, poor and ordinary people. So I think this plays out in quite an interesting way, which is, most of these very rich people are older. They have huge amounts of cash. They give that money to their kids, which means if you are a young person from a rich family, you can easily get a few hundred grand from your parents to buy property, which means that house prices go up very aggressively. It means that if you're a younger person from a poor ordinary family, housing becomes something you can't possibly afford to buy. 
And I think this is interesting because people don't really realise it's happening, right? Older people sell their property and they don't realise it's only going to rich people. Whereas younger people can't buy property and they don't realise it's because they're competing with young people from rich families who are getting huge amounts of cash from their parents. But this creates a problem, right? If rich people are using that money to buy housing from poor and ordinary families, that's making the problem worse, right? Because it's transferring more wealth from ordinary families to richer people. So if wealth inequality is very high, the rich get a huge amount of cash from ordinary people and they use that to buy more wealth and assets from ordinary people, it means that wealth inequality gets worse and worse and worse over time. The other thing that they do is they lend that money out. Now, that might sound like a good thing, right? Because if they're lending a lot of money out, you might think, okay, well, we can borrow that money and then it'll be easier for us to get mortgages and then it'll be easier for us to buy houses. But remember, if you can borrow more money from the rich, then so can everybody else. And what this means is you are competing with people who can borrow huge amounts from the rich, which means you have to borrow huge amounts from the rich. And increasingly, we're seeing a situation where for ordinary people, the only way to get a house is to borrow really, truly enormous amounts of money, especially here in London, you have young people borrowing half a million pounds to buy a house. So if rich people accumulate huge amounts of cash, they use that to buy assets and indirectly force ordinary people into debt in order to do simple things like buy a house. So that money is used to push up asset prices and also drive ordinary families out of being able to own assets. But there's another problem with these cash flows of inequality, which has become much more obvious during COVID. The cash flows that go from ordinary people to rich people, many of them are legal obligations. You have to pay your rent, you have to pay your mortgage, you have to pay your bills. But the cash flows that come back round, especially luxury spending, is basically totally optional for wealthy people. What this means is, in a sense, wealthy people have a stranglehold on the economy. You need their money to pay your bills, but they have the complete choice whether to give you their money or not. And we saw this during COVID when suddenly rich people were not allowed to live lives of extreme luxury. That meant that a huge number of people completely lost their incomes and couldn't pay their bills. And this can happen at any time, basically. If the rich at any time decide to suddenly significantly stop spending money, it will cause an economic disaster for poor and ordinary people. 2008, in many ways, was a similar crisis. When we have this situation where ordinary people continually have to churn money to the rich, and the rich can decide whether to turn money back, our economy is always on the verge of collapse. Okay, so to conclude, rich families keep getting richer because you have to give them basically your entire paycheck every month. It's no more complicated than that. That means they accumulate a huge amount of money from you, your family and your community every month, every year. They use that money to buy your assets and put you into debt. What that means is, if you don't do anything about it, they will get richer and richer and richer and richer and ordinary people will get poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. The consequences of that are exactly the kind of consequences we're seeing now. If these guys are super rich and the rest of us are super poor, then they will consume all of the natural resources, which means that we will not be able to afford basic things like food and heating. So this is a really significant problem and in the absence of any action against it, it will get worse and worse. You know, it's kind of like, a cancer in our society. It will only grow if we don't do anything about it. And what COVID has shown us is it's created a massive, massive increase in inequality in a very short period of time. And it's showing us really clearly what the consequences of that are. If inequality gets massively bigger, then ordinary people will see their quality of life decrease. House prices will go up, which will mean ordinary people can't afford to buy houses. And increasingly, if you do want a house, you have to take massive amounts of debt. So, COVID has made it really clear what happens when inequality increases. But I think what I want to make clear in this video is in the absence of any action against it, that will get worse and worse and worse over time. Because as inequality increases, fewer of us own assets, which means we have to pay more money to them, which means they will get richer, which means they will buy more of our assets. To conclude, rich people get richer because we give them all of our money. They use that money to make themselves richer and us poorer. If we don't do anything about it, things will get worse and worse and worse. So I would encourage you please to support me and this channel in pushing politicians to make a wealth tax happen to make things more equal going forward. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, then we are done. You cannot be surprised when these people turn to crime 
and these people turn to dangerous means of getting it. If the best people were in the best jobs, then they'd come from all throughout society. But right now, they all come from the same schools and the same families. 